I wanted to clarify a thing or two with everybody. Um, you know, I helped my friend uh, Vanessa in Southern California. Uh, she had a new car and uh, I helped her get out from under the payments and stuff uh, by validating the debt. So don't think that I have given up all hope and started being a normie all the way because uh, <laughs> I think we're going to go on a debt validation journey one of these days coming up soon. You know what I mean? Uh, wouldn't it be nice to like be able to uh, get a new car? And welcome to Facts or Frauds. What you are witnessing is real. The participants are not actors. All right, so we have Mr. Peltola here. Ma'am, I'll give you my name if you can prove charges exist. If not, I'll step behind the bar underneath copyright law. Huh? All right, hold on. I'll call your case and I'll give you the floor. Just page one. Just page one, if you would, please. Thank you. All right, people of the state of Michigan versus Drew James Peltola files 247831SM. And file uh, 247819 SM, Mr. Peltola appears from the Dickinson County Jail. Council at- known as Drew James Peltola appears before you as Hold a on. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Just let me make the appearances and I'm going to give you the floor, okay? In regard to the matter, Nancy Schaub is here as both his counsel on the underlying file on 247819SM, as well as the first bond violation. She's here as CAFA counsel on bond violation number two in this file, as well as a new file of 7831SM. Kristen Cass is here on behalf of the prosecutor's office. Drew Peltola, I'm going to give you an opportunity now to say whatever you want to say. Go ahead. Ma'am, I was trying to get a ride to court this morning. This bond violation. Oh, wait, 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 sir. I don't want you to talk about the underlying charges. I wanted you to no. say whatever you wanted to say. I thought you started to say some sovereign citizen information that you wanted to make a record of. I am an American non citizen national uh, as defined in the United States Code. And I do believe that underneath copyright, once my name is copyrighted through the daily news, once I put that copyright on your paperwork, that's something called copyright impoundment. That means that under Area Railroad versus Tompkins, the fictitious entity under due process of law does not apply to my sui juris living being. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to state for the record concerning this issue then, Mr. Um, Peltola? No, there's not, Your Honor. I would just like to be released again on a PR bond. You have expedition charges. I, I'm asking the courts to please release me on a PR bond again, and I'll continue to abide by court rules and stay off the drugs and try to maintain my court dates. All right. In regard to the matter, then, Mr. Peltola, I have an advice of rights and plea. And I, for the record, I will acknowledge your comments, that your objections in respect to the court's jurisdiction and whatnot are noted for the record concerning your position regarding your... Um, your status with the court. All your rights are preserved. In regard to the matter, did you understand the advice of rights and plea information form as it was then, Mr. Peltola? Yes, I did, Your Honor. How about the bond violation arraignment hearing form? Did you understand that? I do not have it in my hands, but I read it. And yes, I fully understand. All right. It's signed by you today's date. Did you sign it? Yes, I did. It also, Brad. Yes, I did, ma'am. All right, then, in regard to the matter, I also have a waiver of extradition here. I'm going to just go back over what it means to sign one of those. And let me start by saying, so long as you come back to court voluntarily for all your court appearances, this does not become relevant. But if you didn't come back to court, normally you're entitled to what's called an extradition hearing before you are returned to Michigan. And the purpose of an extradition hearing allows you to challenge the legality of your arrest and return to Michigan to fight the underlying charges. For example, you have the right to have an open court hearing. You have the right to be represented by an attorney at an extradition hearing. And if you're without sufficient funds, one is assigned for you. 
You have the right to demand issuance and service of a Michigan governor's warrant for your arrest. You have the right to obtain a writ of habeas corpus. When you sign a waiver of extradition, if you don't come back to court, then you give up your right to that type of a hearing and you would be returning directly with the officials from Michigan. Do you understand what that means to sign the waiver of extradition then, Mr. Peltola? I understand, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Ms. Schaub, did you have a chance to go over the nature of the charges and the maximum penalties with Mr. Peltola? I did, Your Honor, and he waived reading of those charges in open court. I've determined that he has read, signed, and understood both advice of rights forms. <clears throat> he wishes to plead not guilty, and he is requesting assigned counsel. Case manager has determined that he still qualifies for assigned counsel, and she will be assigning that to me um, if needed um, to set this matter on a date that is not typically mine. I have no problem with that. Um, I thought it would be in the best interest that I represent Mr. Peltola in all of this matter. All right, then. Concerning the matter, and we're going to get back to the issue of bond, but I'm going to enter not guilty, please, on behalf of Mr. Peltola. Concerning the case that is presently set for pre-trial and has a trial date coming up, um, that is the 7819SM case. And the bond violation, now with the new bond violation, are we going to set both bond violations together or do you want to proceed on the first one today? Um, I would like to set both of them together, I think, in the interest of justice. And the prosecutor had made an offer on the original file, and I think they will be making a new offer. And I think... Um, in light of that, it would be best to adjourn those matters on violations uh, in that file. So we have a jury trial set for March 8th in that matter. Um, it would be my intention then to, let's see, how stacked are we on, on March 8th? Currently have eight defendants, but that's the only thing scheduled for that day. So that's two days past 14 days. Well, he's on a bond violation. There's no 14 day limit. In regard to the matter that is within 28 days, um, we could set both bond violations as well as both jury trials on that date, if you wish. We could pre-try the new matter that he's just being arraigned on today. You can conduct your pretrial by mail. We'll send out our standard pretrial order with you today. Set all of the dates on the two bond violations and the two jury trials for March 8th. Does that sound like a plan? Yes, sir. All right. Did you wish to be heard on bond then on the newest bond violation as well as the new underlying charge? Yes, your honor. Actually, the newest bond violation predates the previous bond violation. Um, the first bond violation is alleged to have occurred on February 22nd. This current bond violation that he's being rained on today occur, is alleged to have occurred on February 19th. And in light of that, um, I would ask the court to consider um, setting either a reasonable bond or again, a PR bond. Um, in discussing this matter with Mr. Peltola, he does have criminal matters pending in Brown County, and there is a court date on Monday in that case. Um, it looks like from the lien printout, he may have had some issues either in the past or currently appearing in court, and I'd like to be able to have Mr. Peltola be able to take care of that matter. It looks like it's a more serious matter than the matters in this court. Um, if, you know, if he can make those arrangements to get down to Green Bay to take care of that. Uh, he's given me the name of his attorney and I intend to contact that attorney and see what Mr. Peltola needs to be doing with regard to that case. 
so if the court does not grant a bond that he can post, perhaps we can make arrangements for him to appear from the jail here. Uh, but as I said that, it is interesting that the um, current bond violation the current bond violation is 219. Your Honor, it was a it was a typo. The corresponding police report to the first viola bio bond violation it, it was, should be February 11th. So I would have to move to amend that. The um, bond violation was signed prior to February 22nd, so it would have been. A Which one are you talking about? Bond violation number one. It says um, on. It says 212 on mine. I, Ms. Shop probably still has the one. The original says two twenty two. It was amended after, so oh. so that they are in a, the first one did happen first in time frame. So I, okay, so what is the date of the first two twelve? Two twelve. The second bond violation we are alleging happened on the nineteenth, along with the new offense. Correct. All right, anything else on bond then? Um, no, Your Honor. Ms. Cass, you wish to be heard on bond? I believe it's your discretion. All right, concerning the matter then, I have some concerns regarding Mr. Peltola. He seems to be on a spiral. This started with a disorderly drunk on February 4th in a public place. I saw him on February 5th. I set his bond terms. I saw him back on February 12th, excuse me, with a point two three six on a preliminary breath test. I set bond at that time um, on the bond violation and the underlying. And the reason I told him then that I was going to give him the break is that normally I see people in between, they get arraigned, I give them the warning. And then they come back on a bond violation. He had not had the warning in between because he violated his bond so quickly that I saw him all at once. So I told Mr. Peltola at that time that um, I would set the bond at a 1000 PR, but understand that if he came back again, he would leave me no opportunity or new choice. So here we are, not even a week later on February 19th, stealing alcohol from the Norway Quick Stop. Involving, involving another bond violation as well as a new underlying charge that I'm free to assume is true for purposes of setting bond. So for purposes of setting bond today and then for the following reasons and in regard to his Wisconsin matters, very serious matters, he's got two felonies pending in Brown County from 2023. The first one alleges possession of narcotic drugs, a felony, Possession of a controlled substance on or near certain places with a modifier, carrying a concealed knife, possession of drug paraphernalia. That case has been pending through for quite some time. And he has a court date for a status conference scheduled for February 26th at 11 a.m. Then, so the date of this offense was um, filing date of 10, 210 of 2023. He's got a filing date of March 15th of 2023 in Brown County, another felony alleging bail jumping as well as possession of drug paraphernalia. Likewise, that has a court date at the same date and the same time as the other pending felony. I think that is part of the other pending felony. They charge it as a separate offense. but It's a separate case, separate whole, total separate case, total separate charges total separate bond, total separate court dates. This is file 23 CF 448. The first one is 23 CF 240. So in respect to the matter, my point being for purposes of setting bond, Mr. Peltolo has some substance abuse issues going on. He's got numerous cases pending in Wisconsin as well as now here. In regard to the matter, Mr. Peltolo, I'm gonna direct you to talk to your lawyer. I'm setting bond concerning the um, new theft case, then the conditions are going to be as follows. Mr. Peltola may not enter into the Norway quick stop as a condition of his release. He is not to purchase, possess, or consume alcohol or non-prescribed controlled substances. Mr. Peltola is subject to random PBTs and drug screens. Mr. Peltola may not go in any businesses to sell alcohol for use inside, such as bars and taverns. Recreational and medicinal marijuana use and possession are prohibited until or unless further order of the court. 
conditioned on him signing that waiver of extradition, which I do have in the file. I will allow him to go back and forth to Wisconsin for purposes of uh, court hearings and or meeting with his attorney. Um, if in residency, he lives in Wisconsin. In residency. No, he lives in Vulcan. Or he says Vulcan. Is that just your mailing address? Yes, we can do it like that if you choose to. Well, what? where is your residency? My Please. residency and my domicile is 19th Street, where you can switch it with a mailing address to W. In Michigan, the address should be in there. It should be bracketed. All right, and that's apartment 13. You didn't put that on there, though. Apartment 13? Yes, ma'am. And that's your mailing address, though? Yes, but the problem is, is that building's not registered anywhere. I had to go to the post office and I had something mailed and they told me that my mail was being returned and because there's no actual um, mailboxes in the building. All right. So I got two issues I need to deal with here. One, do you live in Wisconsin? Do you have to go to Wisconsin for purposes of residency or just your court stuff? My mailing address, my residency and my domicile are all registered at my mother's house. There was some um, unexplained events that I will not say out loud. Uh, I don't know where your basis. mother's house is, Mr. Peltola. I, I Niagara, Wisconsin, 54151. My mail and address will be W. I can't remember that off the top of my head. All right. So in regard to bond, then condition on him signing a waiver of extradition, I'll allow him to go back and forth between Michigan and Wisconsin for residency, court appearances, meetings with his attorney. In regard to the matter, if you relocate for any reason, you must provide the court with an updated address and phone number within seven days of any change. Concerning the amount of the bond on the new retail fraud, I'm going to set that. Um, I'm going to set that at 1,000 cash surety, 10%. In regard to the newest bond violation, then, um, I am going to, I'm finding for both of them, actually, I'm going to make a record based on the factors the court is required to consider under MCR 6.106, cons considering the frequency, the charges, the dates that I have mentioned, as well as the ongoing Wisconsin matter, I am finding that to release him on a personal recognizance bond would not adequately ensure public safety. In regard to the bond violation um, concerning the matter, then I am going to set the bond violation at 2,500 cash surety, 10%. So Mr. Peltola, those bonds are set. If you get out, you make sure to get in touch with your lawyer. If you're in custody, she'll be in touch with you. You may. Can I say, yes. You know, I don't understand how I can tell you that I'm an American national and you can hold me in a county jail under bond. Especially today when I was arrested on a larceny under $200, somebody changed case prefixes and the warrant got dropped to a misdemeanor. And now you're still going to illegally hold me in a county jail under bond? No, 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 no. Well, yes. All right, Mr. Peltel, I'm not going to argue with you. Your uh, sovereign citizen has been noted for the record. In regard to the matter, you are um, under the order of the court. You're under the jurisdiction of the court. I decline to uh, follow case? what your... Can I, can I at least your... tell you that I, was, I was arrested on a larceny charge that was dropped through a case prefix. What, you went all incoming evidence? Can I at least have you admit that in the court of law that you guys illegally kidnapped me again with a larceny through John Rod D. Clark, Norway Police Department? Can I just have you admit that once? No, Mr. Peltola, I don't even know what you're talking about. I will not admit that. Thank you to the jail. We are off the record on this matter. Judge, if I may, on that bond issue, he paid it, but you haven't seen him ever since. Didn't show up for trial. And now... He's facing those Wisconsin charges. He's not showing up there either. You can't fix stupid.
And thanks for hanging out with us on Facts or Frauds. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. You're subscribed. And ring that bell for notifications. So next time I premiere a video, you can be in the live chat with everyone else. And leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. And a huge thank you to all of our Facts or Frauds channel members. And if you're still hanging out, thank you. I appreciate you all. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, you're subscribed, and leave a comment in the comment section telling me what you think. Until next time, I'll see you soon.